Okay. Looks like we are live. Hello and welcome to the MMA Live Chat Show. I'm Rich Davy and it's Tuesday, November 25th, 2014. On today's show, we'll be discussing the Tough 20 Episode 10 show that will be featuring the matchup between Iceland Daly and Jessica Penny. On today's show, we have yours truly and Eddie Law. Thanks for taking part in another show, buddy. I appreciate you taking time to be here and joining me to discuss the Tough 20 Episode 10 Iceland Daly versus Jessica Penny matchup. Go ahead and say hello to anybody that might be listening, my friend. Uh, what's up, people? What's going on, Rich? Uh, just uh, I'm I'm, actually, I'm very intrigued about this 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 fight here because it's uh, to me it seems kind of like a weird matchup, but uh, definitely definitely wait. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and talk about this for those who have not really been following things here on the show. Here, I'll give a little introduction to the fighters and everything like that, and uh, discuss their records here, and then we'll go ahead and we'll talk about uh, you know what we think is going to happen here. Okay, the Tough 20 Episode 10 show that will be featuring the matchup between Rising and Daly and Jessica Penny takes place Wednesday, November 26, 2014, and will air on the Fox Sports 1 network at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. This is the second quarterfinal fight of the season of Tough, and this one should be an interesting fight as well. Taking a look at the two ladies fighting in this episode, Rising Daly is 26 years old and hails from Ireland. She has a record of 14 wins and 5 losses and was ranked number five in the first episode of the season. Isling Daly defeated number 12 ranked Angela Magana in her first fight on this season of Tough to move on in the tournament to face Jessica Penny. Isling Daly has five wins by KO or TKO, seven wins by submission, and two wins by decision. In the loss column, Isling Daly has one loss by TKO and four losses by decision. Daly is likely to be the underdog uh, to win in this matchup here since her opponent was ranked higher in the Tough 20 uh, season opener. Um, and uh, Penny is also the former champ over at Invicta FC. So, uh, you know, those are some of the things that probably have Daly cast in the light as the underdog. All right, moving on to Jessica Penny. Jessica Penny is 31 years old, hails from the USA. She has a record of 11 wins and two losses and was ranked number four in the first episode of this season of Tough. Jessica Penny defeated number 13 ranked Lisa Alice in her first fight on this season of Tough to move on in the tournament to face Isling Daly. And on a side note, one of Daly's losses is to Lisa Ellis. Uh, Jessica Penny has two wins by KO or TKO, seven wins by submission, and two by way of decision. In her loss column, Jessica Penny has only two losses, and they are to two tough opponents. Her last loss was to Michelle Watterson by submission in April of 2013 for the Invicta FC Adam Weight title. And her other loss was by way of decision to Zoila Cajal back in just, uh, 2010. Uh, the fact that Jessica Penny is ranked number four in this season with Tough combined with the fact that she's a former champ and the other factoid that she has a win over Lisa Ellis and Daly has a loss to Ellis would pretty much make Penny the uh, favorite in this matchup here. Um, okay, comments on this matchup between Isaac Daly and Jessica Penny, and uh, who are you going to pick to win this fight, and how do you think this one ends, Eddie? All right, so out of these two fighters, the one we know uh, less about as far as uh, the tough series, the tough, the show, the tough twenty is, is you know goes, is Jessica Penn, uh, because uh, Penny, because she, her last fight was against, was against uh, Lisa Ellis, who didn't really care to fight. As we remember, she kind of gave up in that fight. Um, after uh, I believe in the uh, in the first round, she ended up uh, winning. Or Ellis gave up and pretty, pretty much gave up her back and lost to a rear naked choke. So we don't we haven't really seen any everything that Jessica could bring to a fight, but we have seen what Daly could bring to a fight. And that girl can throw down and she can go to war, right? And in that first uh, in that fight against uh, Angela Magani, I think it was, she you know they got into she got in a bad spot with me um, with Magani's jiu jitsu, and she got a break. By the referee, you know, standing him up and all that. But uh, I mean, from then on, she was she lit Magana up pretty badly to until she finished her by I think by TKO in the end. So this matchup, I mean, there's a lot of unknowns. It's kind of one of those wait and see uh, wait and see fights. But I do I do think he's gonna stay on the feet for the most part. I don't think either girl wants to go to the ground, even though um, Penny's is good on the ground clearly. I don't think Daly wants any part of that. She's gonna try and keep his fight on the on the on the on the feet, and I think Jessica's gonna do the same. Um, and I, if I had to pick, is uh, I would say Daly takes it TKO third round or second round. I don't think it's gonna be a third. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, 
Jessica Penny is pretty tough, man. Um, she yeah. doesn't start out slow. And from what we saw, you know, I don't know a whole lot about Bailey there, but uh, she started out very slow in that fight with Magana because Magana was actually winning that fight up until, you know, they were stood up, I thought. And uh, <clears throat> like you said, you know, come the second and third round in that fight there, um, you know, Daly just turned it up and she proved to be way too much for Magana. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of an interesting fight, not only because, you know, of what we've seen from the girls so far, and I know that we didn't really get to see a lot from Jessica Penny this season here because, um, again, like you mentioned there, uh, that fight with Lisa Ellis was a rematch and, uh, you know, it kind of looked like Lisa Ellis had pretty much you know, had some sort of mental hang-up there, and uh, she just wasn't mentally ready for that fight, and she, uh, you know, pretty much resigned herself to the fact that she was going to lose that one, so, you know, it, it was kind of odd that, uh, you know, that's the way that one turned out, but again, like I mentioned earlier there, Daly also has a loss to Lisa Ellis, you know? Yeah. So, you know, that's pretty interesting there, and I know MMA math doesn't always work out, but, uh, you know, we, we kind of saw where, where Lisa Ellis was at, and you know, we I, we didn't see that fight with uh, Lisa Ellis and Daly there, but uh, you know, for for Daly to lose to Lisa Ellis, I you know I don't know if Lisa Ellis has just given up, you know, mentally in MMA, and maybe that's why she you know lost to uh, Jessica Penny because that fight with Jessica Penny was actually pretty good, the original one. Yeah. Um, but the rematch there was just complete shit. So yeah, I agree with you. Um, kind of tough to say, you know what to expect from Jessica Penny, but if you saw that, did you see her fight with uh, Michelle Watterson? Uh, I, I did not, actually, but it's interesting that she fought an Adam Weight, unless unless Watterson was up in the straw weight at that point. No, it was an Adam Weight belt. Adam Weight, okay, yeah, I didn't see it. That was a great fight, man. I'm going to have to look that up then. No, what I did see was the original, um, the original uh, Lisa Ellis uh, uh, pen fight that was insane. It was blood everywhere. It's pretty crazy, but... Like I said, we don't really know a lot about Penn in this season, other than you know, than, than her history with some of the girls. But I mean, I even have the the uh, the. I was just not too long ago watching the highlights for for Daily Magana, and Daily does not back down to any strikers whatsoever. I mean, she was come, she was walking forward. Like I said, like, like we were talking about right now, after that first round and the second and third rounds, there was no walking back uh, for for Daily whatsoever. No, and she then just what kept flying forward right through like a like a robot almost. Yeah, yeah, and I mean a lot of it has to come from from being that same uh, training with the guy with uh, Conor McGregor and you know Hulahan and all them. So I mean that she's part of that camp. That camp is just uh, you know it's all about you know trying to get knockouts or finishes. So um, yeah, I mean that's that's gonna be a fun one. I'll tell you what, this is gonna be the highest rated episode for the entire season, and I'll tell you why, because Conor McGregor is gonna be in the episode. Yeah. So that's the only reason it's going to be very high rated. This this season of tough, you know, this tough twenty season that, that I, I thought was going to be the possibly the best one um, ever. Uh, it's 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 disappointing in the ratings, and you can you know people could blame it on the on, on it being all girls. People could blame it on the uh, on the drama factor, but it's just not getting a lot of interest. And I think bringing in Connor at this point would help the ratings a lot. Are the but, ratings suffering? Because I keep reading and I keep mentioning it on the shows there because. You know, I try to follow, you know, fan sentiment so I have an idea of what mm. the fans are feeling. But, you know, I'm seeing a lot of fans not really appreciating all this catty bullshit and drama that's going on. Um, so I, I wasn't sure because I mentioned on the last show I didn't know if the ratings were being impacted by that. So have you seen something on that? Um, no, I, I mean, I just because just, just I talk a lot on Twitter and people will be like, yeah, I heard the ratings were you know, pretty low and all that stuff. And, and, yeah, some of the ratings for the last, like, you know, two or three episodes – before the Rose episode. The Rose episode, I think, did okay. But the, a couple, like two or three of them before that episode uh, didn't do too well, uh, according to people on Twitter. I, I didn't I didn't really research it at all. But, yeah, some of the crap they've been they're pulling on those episodes, like like this last one with uh, random, Randa uh, versus, uh, damn, uh, Felice, Felice, Felice uh, uh, Herring. Yeah, and this last one, that with that stupid scene where they're in the bus or they're in the van going to training, yeah. that shit was like, annoying as hell. <laughs> you know, that stuff where they're, like, they're like, like mocking her or whatever. And I was like, really? The fuck? Are we in high school still? What are we doing here? You know? Yeah, I know. And that's what's blowing me away because these ladies are in their mid to late 20s and, and early 30s. It's like, come on, ladies, grow the fuck up. 
Yeah, people were complaining about you know in the other tough with uh, with uh, Ronda and Misha of the same crap. You're getting it threefold here. Like you're getting oh, yeah. it every every single episode. Those other episodes, you know, um, you would get it maybe at the fight, maybe after the fight, whatever. Um, you know, here and there. But this this season, every episode, the entire episode is that that is that bullshit. And it's come to the point where. Like, I'll switch back and forth, man. I'll, I'll be playing a video game or reading something online. I'll just keep the episode on mute until I see the fights start. Because the fights are good. The fights have been pretty good all season long. It's the episode that's just dog shit, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm not a, I'm not, Unless, I mean, I'm, I think maybe, you know, female fans maybe appreciate that because they like that real world, you know, MTV reality show bullshit. But I, I want to see the fight. That's all I really care to see. If all they did was show the fights, I'd be happy with that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, I know you're not a, <clears throat> I know you're not a fan of uh, the Tough Talk show, but did you see the last episode of Tough Talk after um, the episode nine show where they had uh, Randall Marcos and Carlos Sparza on the show? Yeah, so I had a, uh, I had a friend over for that one, and she wanted to see it. Um, she, uh, she, she, she wanted to see it. She actually, she, she had TV at her house. She came to see some other show. And she just came too early, and I was still watching the fights, and or the, the the episode. And then you know she saw the the the, the drama BS that was going on. She's like, oh, you know this is interesting. I was gonna change it. No, no, leave it on here. So she was watching it with me. And then the episode ends, and I always switch to something else. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then she saw the the tease for the tough talk. No, no, no. I want to see what they said. I want to see what they said. And this is how I knew that it was gonna be horrible because she actually gave a fuck. I was sitting here going, this is terrible. <laughs> like, I don't, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm sitting here going, like, why should, and I asked her, I was like, do you really like this shit? These two girls just, just, you know, just, they're not even like all out dissing each other. They're like dissing each other as, as, mo as respectfully as possible. It's like this, it's like getting in a, in a, in a, in a, in a beef with John Jones. He'll, he'll diss you respectfully, but he's still an asshole. Like, you know, so I don't know. I, I, I mean, I saw it and it was just them going back and forth and everything, but, um, what I did see is that some people are saying that Random Marcos might have leaked that she's going to be in the title fight. Did you hear that? Yeah, I, I put that on the last show. I don't know if you listened to the last show, but yeah, I put that out there. <clears throat> I think that's where I heard it. I listened to your show, and I think that's where I heard it. And then I was, I was like talking to people about it. Um, I wonder if that's true because um, if, that, if that's true and she's actually going to make it to the title fight, uh, she might be like the most uh, under underrated um, fighter in tough history, or as far as the rankings go, because mm -hmm. she was ranked real low. Yeah, she was ranked 14, a, I believe, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. No, so she I was wonder, ranked 16, wasn't she? Or what? What the hell was she ranked? It was double digits. I know that, yeah. but uh, I mean, she's taking out two two good fighters, and um, you know, I love uh, the one thing I did like, and this, this probably comes from the fact that I'm a Diaz fan. And these guys talk like this. And she was like, she told uh, when Carla was, were after the fight, they were sitting on the, on the bleachers and shit, and Carla was talking shit, and she's like, yeah, you next. I like that kind of thing, because that's talking to the chick uh, to her face, saying, you're next, and that's yep. it. That's, all, that's where she left it. She yep. didn't keep going. She didn't mock her in the van. She didn't say, oh, my God, blah, 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 whatever. It's all bullshit. No, she said, you next, and then walked off. That's it. That's the kind of trash talk I like, but, you know, to, to take us all the way back to high school and then, you know, take everyone back to their high school days that nobody liked. I don't care who you are. Everybody hated high school, you know. It's, yeah, I, uh, I agree with you, man. Because a lot of the girls are acting like they're fourteen and fifteen year old freshmen and sophomores. You know, it, it's like, come on, ladies, grow the fuck up. And you know, Randa doesn't really act like that. She doesn't have that childish mentality when she's, you know, going back. She pretty much, you know, wants to avoid the drama. But I thought on the tough talk show, the two of them were just so rude to each other. I mean talking over each other, you know, disrespecting each other, basically. But, you know, and, and then again, too, you know, I don't know if you heard on the show the things that I read about what Felice Herrick said, but, you know, Felice Herrick made it sound like uh, they edited the show to make Randa look better. Now, why would that be? Why would they edit the show to make Randa look better? Because maybe Randa is going to be the next champ. It, it's, it's yeah, quite possible. And, you know, at the same time, if you, I mean, look, Felice looked horrible. I mean, her and Carla look really bad right here in this episode. So maybe she wants to say that just to, you know, just to say that way. I mean, everybody's complained about it. Ronda, Ronda Rousey might have been the first person to complain about the editing. And because she's not afraid to say anything. And these girls, you know, are using the same excuse. 
Like, oh, we look terrible because of the editing. And, oh, you look terrible because you said some stupid shit no one wants to hear. So, you know, I, you know what I wonder is if they'll ever do another all-female um, tough, uh, tough series. I can't like, imagine that they would because just, you know, as much as I enjoy the fighting this season and the talent of the women on the show, this fucking childish bickering bullshit that's going on with these women, that just destroys it for me. Yeah, I mean, I think if they ever bring women back to tough, they're gonna. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be a. You know, a mix again. The way they did it with, with, uh, with. You know, Tate and Rosie. Yeah, that was tough yeah. yeah. So I mean, I think that's what. If they ever do it again with women, it's gonna be that. I don't think they're ever gonna do another another all female one, and that sucks. Com- just completely sucks because the fights have been pretty good. Like, if you made a whole fight card just to these girls, I'm sure you could pull off a good like a UFC fight night with high ratings and and fun fights, but. Um, again, it's just it's that drama. It's it's that you know it, it, you know Dave's Dana White pushing it again, trying to figure out what people want to watch, and uh, you know it's two seasons in a row that have had you know kind of crappy ratings. Tough Nineteen was boring, and Tough Twenty is just annoying. Yeah. So well, Tough Thirty came good. out recently, and he said that uh, in 2015, in the next Tough show that they do, they're mm-hmm. going to be trying something totally different. So um, I don't know if you did you see the Fight Master reality show, which was kind of their rip-off of Tough. Right, so I tried to. I really did. And I got through the first, like, three episodes and then I was just so annoyed. I couldn't do it. Like, anyway, it it's not because of the UFC, you know, the Tough, because I, I like the Tough series a lot and all that. I, it was because this the format they use is kind of, like, irritating to me, you know? Uh, not to mention I'm not a big uh, Shamrock fan. So, yeah. but, uh, but uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I saw three episodes. I didn't follow the whole thing. Did you? I saw most of the episodes there because I actually liked the fact that there was no drama. I liked the fact that it was more about fighting. I didn't really care about, you know, the whole way that they had the judging set up, kind of like almost like The Voice or, you know, American Idol or some shit like that. I didn't care for that so much. Yeah. Um, but I did like the fact that it was more about the fighters themselves than it was about all the bullshit drama. I mean, you didn't see any guys tearing up a house or anything like that, so... Maybe that's what they're going to do next season. Maybe they're going to go more towards, you know, showing about the fighters and their training and things like that and just, you know, skip all that bullshit reality drama. I think that would be a great move for them. Um, yeah, I mean, the other, the other idea I thought about, and I thought about this a long time ago, so somebody, someone might have already talked about it or maybe they're, they're discussing it over at UFC, but was letting those fighters train at their home camp and just having, like, a camera crew follow them around. Yeah. And then just you know everyone goes out for the week, and then you meet up together, and then have a fight, and then you know move out again. And, and I mean maybe that's another way to go, but uh, uh, again, it's just uh, he needs well, that, to change. That, that might that might present a problem because um, also on the preview show that they did for the Herrick Marcos fight, um, it was being rumored out there that Marcos actually leaked the fact that she beat Herrick. Um, so I mean, if that turns out. To have some sort of validity to it, and again with what you know she kind of did on the uh, the tough talk show where she kind of said, "And I hope I win the title." Um, uh, that kind of to believe that she fucked up there again, you know. So uh, if, you know if that is the case, then you know having all those guys out there to have the freedom, how many more people are going to leak shit out? And I don't know if they're, I don't know if they do odds and. and betting on, on the tough fights, but that might be a problem there if, you know, they have the shit, you know, being leaked by, you know, 16 different guys and 16 different crews following them around, so. Shit, maybe go back to the, to, uh, to doing it live again. I mean, that might be one thing. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of dug the live format, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's basically having a fight night every Wednesday, so. Exactly. That, that was, uh, that was I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I don't know why they wouldn't keep doing it. Um, maybe, do two fights. Shit, maybe do so. two fights a night instead of all the bullshit, you know? Yeah. No, that'd be cool. I'd be, I'd be down with, with that because, I mean, it gets uh, – it's like, I don't know, like, for example, I'm a big uh, fan of The Walking Dead. I fought it off as long as I could. Then they made me watch an episode, and I was fucking stuck, dude. But, you <laughs> know, um, I'm a big fan of it, right? So I started watching it like four weeks ago, which means I had to catch up from season one to season five. So I fucking binge watched this shit, and it took me about two weeks, but I got through all of them, caught up, right? But I got so used to watching them whenever I wanted to that now I have to wait a week, and it, it's so fucking annoying. Like yeah, I can't. No, I, I was that way with Dexter. I mean, I didn't want to watch Dexter because I didn't care for that whole premise of a serial killer who was the good guy, 
Yeah. But then when I started watching it, I got really into it because it was down here in South Florida where it was filmed, and I know all of those areas that they're showing in, on the show, so it was kind of interesting to me. And then once I, I watched the first um, season that somebody sent to me, I was like, wow, this is a pretty good show, man. And then I, I was hooked on it like you, where I had to catch up, and I think it was like the first four seasons I had to catch up on. And then after that, I was you know, a Dexter fan for life, man. And then right as I was getting into it, the show... You know, ended, but I don't know if you were a Dexter fan or not, were you? Uh, no, no. I, I mean, I, 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 I like watching the episode once in a while. The girl I was dating at the time, a girl I was dating at the time, she, uh, she was a big fan of it, so she kind of made me watch it. But I mean, it, I like the, uh, the, the, the premise of it, but it always ended the same way. So it's kind of like, eh, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I guess I guess it was so interesting to me because again, like yeah. I said, I live in South Florida, and, and the show was pretty much shot around all the areas that I, I knew for. The last twenty something years living down here. Yeah. No, I, okay, I ended so up being. Huh, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay, I was gonna say I ended up being a huge Breaking Bad fan. That's that's I don't know why, but that that was. Awesome and I never got into that one because I just couldn't get behind the fact <laughs> that they're fucking embracing a meth dealer. You know? <laughs> I never thought I could feel bad for a guy that makes and sells meth and shoots people. Like I just I couldn't I could never I never like thought I'd feel bad for that guy. But at the end of the show when it, when it was all over, I felt really bad for him. Yeah. Well, you know, you have to question what's going on in the entertainment industry because you know, with shows like that, are we fucking cultivating a whole society of fucking sociopaths or what? <laughs> I tell you what, they call television programming for a reason, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's why that's why you, you gotta be careful. Any changes that take place in society, society mirrors what they see on TV. You know. Yeah, no, and and that, you know, what's funny about that is I was, watch, I, was I had actually just watched an, uh, an episode of uh, uh, I forgot what zombie movie it was on some it was some dog shit zombie movie on sci-fi like straight to TV movie. I had just watched that and then I uh, uh, turned on the news and they had that chick or that the guy that bit the dude's face off in Miami because he was on freaking. Uh, that was fucking weird. He was on that spice shit. Yeah, yeah, he was on the spice stuff, but it was like I just watched a zombie thing, and now we got zombies. What the fuck is going on? Like, yeah. so yeah, I can see that. Yeah, crazy world we're living in, man. I don't know. It just keeps getting, and you know, they keep saying that each generation is progressively worse than the last. I mean, how bad are things going to fucking get if we got, you know, a bunch of sociopaths and people chewing people's faces off, and nobody gives a shit about anybody? I mean, hey, man. Scary. After last night, after last night, I had to I had to ask myself real because. I've always, I don't know, I've always, I've, I've always had this thought, it's like uh, um, this this kind of uh, dream that I'd be a father one day. That last night, that shit that went down in Ferguson, it made me question the hell out of that. Like, do I really want to do that? I always wanted kids because I came from a big family, but I'm the only one in my family who didn't have kids, and that was for a reason. I didn't want to bring my kids up in this fucked up society, man, you know? Yeah, no, so last night made me think about that real hard, and it's just one of those things where I'm like, ah, I don't, I don't know. But uh, you know, hey, look, I've just gone mad. There's no more, there's no more critical thinking in society. Everybody just does, you know. And to me, this is like the '70s all over again because the '70s were the me, um, the, was the me decade, and and it's even, even more out of hand now. It's like the '70s on steroids, and people are just so fucked up today, man. Kind of yeah, frightening. Yeah, no, it is, and then you know, it's just. Uh, I guess the way society has is, is evolved is, uh, like you said, generation after generation gets kind of crazy. But again, I don't know if I'm gonna have kids now. Not necessarily only because of you know, last night, but last night was an example of the shit that's that's uh, that's coming. So, yep. um, but if I do have kids, hopefully they train MMA and they uh, they because uh, that'll give you some discipline real quick and uh, yeah, make you. It's, it's kind of sad to see the way we're going because you know when I was a kid growing up, most of the programming on TV. You know, had to do with morals and how to treat your neighbors and be respectful, and you know, it was all good things. And today, there's nothing like that out there. I mean, everything is just, you know, it's a free for all. You know. Hey man, we lost Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. That shit ended quick. There was yeah. nothing good anymore. <laughs> yeah, that was. I think that was after my time. I don't remember seeing him when I was a kid. It was like romper room and shit like that. <laughs> yeah. Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> no, at the I, I was at the very end of uh, of uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and at the start of like Barney, the dinosaur and the stupid cleanup songs and shit. So <laughs> yeah, I, that was so irritating. <laughs> like yeah, I didn't but, see uh, a lot, but I did see a lot of the parodies on. Oh yeah. Dinosaur. 
Absolutely. There's a lot of a lot of jokes you can say about about Barney. Yeah, I, you know, we could, you know, you know, you and I, we could just go on and on talking about all kinds yeah. of fucking shit. But uh, all right, so back to the uh, daily uh, penny fight there. You think it's going to remain on the feet? You think uh, Daly is going to win by TKO and two due to strikes? Yeah, I think she'll be incredibly um, hyped up and inspired by the visit of Conor McGregor. And she's going to go in there for war, and then she's going to end up taking it second round of TKO. Yeah, you know, you know that kind of has some validity to it there, because, you know, both these ladies apparently have skills on the ground there. They each have seven wins by submission. Um, but uh, Daly actually has five wins by KO or TKO, so you, you might have a point there. But uh, I don't know. Jessica Penny is pretty tough. Um, she's a beast, yeah. I think, I think I'm going to go the opposite way. And uh, I think I'm going to say Penny is tough enough to be able to, you know, take it to the ground. I think that's probably where she would probably rather fight. Um, because I think that, like you're saying, you know, Daly is just going to come through and walk through whatever she can walk through. And I think that is to her benefit there, being that she has three more wins by KO or TKO than Penny. Uh, than Penny. Um, but uh, I, I think... I think it's going to go to the ground, and I think their submission skills cancel each other out, and I think it's going to go to a decision. So I think I'm going to go and say Jessica Penny wins by decision in two. Mm, yeah. That could happen. I don't know. I think it'll be a good fight, but it's, uh, what, what I'm more excited about as far as that goes, besides Connor being on the episode, is the fact that that uh, this kind of a who fucking knows fight, you know. In the last last few fights, we've known, okay, who has the advantage here, who has, you know, who needs to work on this. But this is one of those fucking who knows fights, and I think, you know, for me, I think daily daily just being tough, and um and 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 you know having just balls of steel. I mean, maybe not balls, but you know what I'm saying, got to steal. Yeah. Uh, should just walk forward through uh through Penny and, and finish her. Yeah, and again, she she seems to be one of the larger girls on this episode, mm -hmm. and. If Penny was fighting at atom weight, that's 105 for those out there who don't know. And these girls are fighting at 115. I think Daly has even fought at, you know, 125, I believe, hasn't she? Yeah, she has. Yeah, she's been out there. So she's probably going to be a little bit bigger. So you might be right, you know I mean? But I do think it's going to be to Penny's benefit not to stand on the feet with her. I think it's probably wise to take it to the ground. If it does stand on, stay on the feet, I think you're right. It, it'll probably end in Daly's favor by TKO. Um, but I don't think Penny is going to allow that. She's pretty tough on the ground, and I don't know if you saw that armbar. Well, you said yeah, you didn't see yeah. that fight, but that armbar with Michelle Watterson, holy Christ, man, she was holding off forever on that, but eventually she had a tap because she was going to get her arm broken. But uh, Yeah, I've read yeah. about her about her ground game. It's actually really good. And, she, and again, her toughness her toughness, and the ability to uh, to survive uh, submissions. I mean, hell, maybe get to the end of the first round, Daly gets her or something, and she hangs on. Mm -hmm. You know, so we'll see. I mean, it could be, I could see it even going to a third. This could probably be one of the, you know, one of the great fights of the, uh, the season, you know? Yeah, possible. Okay, I don't know what else is happening on the show. I've had a busy week at work this week, and uh, that's why I haven't been doing some of the, uh, you know, the UFC shows that we normally do, the prediction shows and the uh, post-event shows. I've been really busy at work, so um, when it comes down to it, uh, I, I do want to keep this whole series of preview and recap shows that we're doing on Tough because it seems like a lot of the fans are interested in, you know, hearing about the show. So I'm going to keep on doing these even if I am busy at work. Yeah, yeah, no, you and me both. Man, we've been it's been insane uh, here in, in Phoenix for the last you know, three weeks now, four weeks. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a little crazy, but uh, yeah, hopefully we can do these more often. Yeah. Okay, any more comments on this show here? Did you hear anything else that might be happening on this show that I didn't get to check out? Uh, no, just the McGregor thing. That's it. Uh, and, uh, I mean, that's something everyone's going to want to watch. So I think it's going to be, like, the highest rated episode. But, um, no, I haven't heard anything else, now. Yeah, a lot of bad blood is developing um, <laughs> between the fighters. You know, and and put, put a bunch and of women in one house together and don't let them go anywhere. Don't give them TV or phone or anything. Someone's going to hate somebody else just because just cause they need something to do. Yeah, like we said, they're probably cycling together. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, I can't think of anything else either, and I've got to take off and go to a meeting here. Um, 
Any other comments, bro? Got nothing. I'm good. Okay. All right. We've reached the end of the show here. Um, uh, thanks again, Eddie, for showing up there. I just want to say thanks to uh, the MMA fans out there who are listening to the show here. Uh, we do prediction shows and post-event shows. Um, so if you want to join us on those shows, you're more than welcome to join us on those. But I do want to thank everybody for listening to the, uh, the Tough 20 preview and recap shows that we're doing. Um, if you want to join us on the shows, just go to MMA Chat. Create an account there. Let us know that you want to join us on the show. We'll give you access to the area of the site where we plan the shows, and we post the links to go live on the show with us, and uh, we'll get you on the shows. Um, so thanks again, everybody, for listening, and uh, it's time to say goodbye, Eddie, my friend. So I'll see you next time. See you next time, man. All righty.